students again we are back now welcome to study with master notes today i will start unit 5 from the colonial to the federal the context of the american enlightenment previously i have given four videos and of the unit 1 2 3 and 4 you can go through the video through description i will provide uh, please go through unit 5 from the colonial to the federal the context of the american enlightenment please like share and subscribe my video for further my lectures on this video and i will give some key points or key notes you can note down in your notebook which will help you in your exam okay so we will start from the colonial to the federal the context of the american enlightenment so here is the structure the objectives introduction the material basis of the american enlightenment the enlightenment and america slavery and the enlightenment the american women of the 18th century let us sum up questions and suggested readings then we will go to the objectives so what is the objectives in the video the aim of this unit is to take stock of the context of american literature produced between the period of the early european colonial settlements in america okay so europe early european colonial settlements in america we will study okay american literature produced between the period of the early european colonial settlements in america and the formation of a federal association of these colonies in the wake of their struggle to achieve independence from the domination of the government in england okay so here is a federal association was there which was established by european colonial settlements in america of these colonies in the wake of their struggle to achieve independence from the domination of the government in england this period is often referred to as the period of the american enlightenment taking up from the enlightenment in in england in terms of its ideas and ideals some of these ideas and ideals as well as their exponents are presented in this unit the unit intends to offset the optimism of the enlightenment ideology in general by focusing upon certain darker aspects of the enlightenment period then come to introduction the material basis of the american enlightenment by the early 1700s two distinct economic worlds had taken shape in the colonies generally north and south of pennsylvania's southern border one exported two crops rice and tobacco to europe and was in the process of constructing all its ways of living and thinking around a unique institution and chattel slavery the other consisted overwhelmingly of not the big planters such as those who wore the tobacco and rice plantation but some of all farmers free of feudal obligations to anyone superior to them these two societies were unlike anything in the british isles or in europe as a whole okay the so by the early 1700s to distinct economic worlds had taken shape in the colonies generally north and south pennsylvania southern border okay one exported two crops rice and tobacco to europe and was the process of constructing all its ways of living and thinking around a unique institution that is chattel slavery the other colonized overwhelmingly of not big planters such as those who owned the tobacco and rice plantation but of small farmers free of feudal obligations okay to anyone superior to them then the distinction between the southern and the northern colonies gradually began to be erased with the expansion of agricultural activities in the north to the extent that the colonies there started exporting their produce okay contrary to the earlier practice to the colonies in the south and beyond to the west indies to facilitate this emerging commerce by the 1720s a common paper currency was floated bringing with it prospects of profits and riches soon the placid colonies were living through a boom period then at the hub of this boom was the new look colonial city no longer an extension of the countryside that it once used to be immigrants were beginning to pour in form of germany and ireland in the 1720s 
and thousands of slaves were being purchased in the south a high rate of survival among american born white children who were reared in a far healthier surroundings than children in europe eight live children in a family as against four in europe was common accelerated the rise of population as did a relatively low death rate it's a 1720s period okay low death rate was in 1720s germany and ireland and american okay in 7 in 1700 there had been approximately 250000 people in the colonies by 1775 there would be about 2 to 22 lakh 50000 okay 22 lakh 50000 including people belonging to the indigenous tribes a modern multicultural america was in making there here it is the map you can see okay then there is a transatlantic trade flourished and settlement slowly but surely stretched beyond the limited coastal beach, beach lands of the 17th century into the fertile back country soon reaching the appalachian mountains and entering into the entering their log interior valleys then with mounting influ- affluence and influence people books and ideas moved back and forth across the atlantic in rising volume then the enlightenment in america we will study the enlightenment in america okay one of the many fascinating imports flowing into america from europe after 1700 was a new way of thinking about god nature and humanity the enlightenment founded in the scientific revolution of the 17th century and especially in the work of turing english thinkers like the physicist isaac newton 1640 to 1727 here is the god nature and humanity is the main key point you can note down in 1700 what is the american thinking that is the god nature and humanity okay then sir physicist sir isaac newton english thinkers of towering english like the physicist isaac newton enlightenment thought was consciously scientific rational and this worldly okay so enlightenment thought was consciously scientific rational and this worldly as such enlightenment thinking became for a small minority of educated americans a critic as well as counter to classic traditional protestantism okay so as such enlightenment thinking became for a small minority of educated americans a critic as well as a counter to classic traditional protestantism hence for this two ways of thinking would intermingle in the american mind producing a curious and contradictory blend of theistic belief and skeptical humanism hence for this two ways of thinking would intermingle in the american mind producing a curious and contradictory blend of theistic belief and skeptical humanism the new learning arrived with a dramatic sadness in 1714 when l received a gift of books on newtonian physics and lockean philosophy okay the new learning arrived in the dramatic sadness in suddenness in 1714 when l received a gift of books on newtonian physics and lockean philosophy then harvard college 1726 founded by puritans newton simply wiped away the traditional view of the universe brilliantly demonstrating how a few laws of physics could explain the motions of all heavenly bodies the marvelous order and harmony he believed was the clearest possible demonstration of god's existence and authenticity and of his real intentions for human as well as natural life educated people who read newton no longer saw the universe as controlled by an infinite number of spirits each with its own planet star or comet to supervise the sky seemed swept clean all was geometry calculation and predictability the universe was not a space of mysteries and uncertainties it was above all a reasonable universe john locke applied this way of thinking so pervasively in political and social and human affairs that he became the preeminent philosophical influence in the 18th century thought especially in america okay john locke applied this way of thinking so pervasively in political and social and human affairs that he became the permanent 
prominent philosophical influence in the 18th century thought especially in america he was fascinated by the power of reason though he did not think it all powerful a moderate man in everything he held that some things could never be explained by humanity's reasoning powers that there are limits to what we could know on our own about god for example he said we could know little other than he is the author of the universe and a power save influence in influence in human life people therefore need the bible lock said for only in revelation from god could they learn essential truths about the divine that reason unaided could never reveal however he believed true christianity consisted of only a few essential and therefore he not only urged but exemplified a wide toleration of all protestant beliefs an archetypal product of archetypal product of the american enlightenment was the figure of benjamin franklin 1706 to 1790 franklin represented the essence of enlightenment in his celebration of rationality, rationality practical conduct and materialism okay a self made man and a man of science franklin characteristically characteristically expressed a preference for what is contemporary is called natural religion or deism if natural laws govern everything people such as franklin asked wasn't nature itself god's truest bible okay wasn't nature itself god's truest bible the reasonable method in religion therefore according to them call for a simple procedure discover what things all people that is all civilized people believe in wherever they are okay west benjamin franklin experimenting with electricity has look of wizardry then by this means by this means true religion could be found this came down to a belief in a supreme deity god in a code of ethics divinely established which tells us how to live and a belief that there is an afterlife in which people will receive their rewards and punishments for their deeds in the world church rituals and miracles were simply local superstition and wholly unnecessary some people were not ready to go so far they believed that christ the ultimate miracle was an expression in some explicable way of god's desire in this world but they rejected the concept of trinity god the father god the son and god the holy ghost okay so they believed the christ some people were not ready to go so far they believed in christ the ultimate miracle was an expression in some explicable way of god's desire in this world but they rejected the concept of trinity god the father god the son and god the holy ghost as not only mathematical paradoxical but also contrary to natural law Christ was a man perhaps a divinely inspired one but not god himself there was only one god they said thus these people were called unitarians okay only one god they, that's why these people were called unitarians the bible remained important to them as a book of divine teachings about how we should live with each other unitarians believed each person must rely upon his or her own reasoning powers keeping in mind that there was a little that could be certain in religious matters they believe that the individual is fundamentally good and that if all person listen to the voice of conscience they would be listening to the voice of god unitarianism circulated as a kind of underground faith in england in the mid 18th century prominent among scientists and intellectuals it came to america in the centuries late years most of america's founding fathers including franklin would have called themselves unitarians another notable figure of the american enlightenment was saint den saint jean de crevecoeur okay saint jean de crevecoeur 1735 to 18 1813 a friend of benjamin franklin and a true franklinian character this french born emigre Weaved his classic letters from an American farmer. Okay, used his classic letters from an American farmer, 1782, to celebrate the enlightened practice of democracy in America. 
द फ्रैंकलिनियन एस्पेक्ट ऑफ क्रेविकर्स वर्क इज मोस्ट रेडिली अपरेन्ट इन द अमेरिकन फार्मर्स एंथुसिस्टिक अप्रोवेशन ऑफ द वैल्यूज ऑफ इंडिविजुअलिज्म एंड इंडस्ट्रियसनेस व्हिच फॉर्म द बेसिस ऑफ द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ अ फ्री होल्डर सच एज हिमसेल्फ इट इज द फ्री होल्डर नो डाउट हु इज क्रेवेकर द अमेरिकन दिस न्यू मैन अबाउट हुम ही सिक्स इन्फॉर्मेशन थ्रो हिज फेमस क्वेरी वट देन इज द अमेरिकन इंडेड द फास्ट एट ऑफ क्रेवेकर्स ट्वेल्व लेटर्स are devoted to answering this question the american crevecor says is a european or the descendant of an european who leaving behind all his ancient prejudices and manners receives new ones from the new mode of life he has embraced the new government he obeys and the new rank he holds in the great american asylum In the great American asylum the poor immigrant is freed from the oppression of feudal society okay in great american asylum here it is the main key point the great american asylum okay in the great american asylum the poor immigrant is freed from the opposition of the feudal society from the taxation of landlord church and monarch from involutionary idleness servile dependence penury and useless labor her religion demands but little of him and little voluntary service to the minister and gratitude to god can he refuse this okay her religion here religion demands but little of him and little voluntary service to the minister and gratitude to god but he a trader farmer craftsman or common laborer he will be rewarded amply for his labor so that in time he will cast off his servile timidity and acquire the dignity and self confidence of a true human being okay but he a trader farmer and craftsman or common laborer he will be rewarded amply for his labor uh, so that in time he will cast off his severe servile uh, timidity and acquire the dignity and self confidence of a true human being no wonder crevecoeur crevecoeur should exclaim we have no princess for whom we toil strive and bleed we are the most perfect society now existing in the world who said this that is crevecoeur said this we have no princess for whom we toil starve and bleed we are the most perfect society now existing in the world here it is the crevecoeur saying okay this is the crevecoeur saying that is the we have no princess for whom we toil starve and bleed we are the most perfect society now existing in the world but if in the projection of the perfection of american society in his first eight letters crevecoeur echoes franklin in the last four letters he clearly signals the limits of the franklinian discourse it is in the ninth letter itself that we find crevecoeur striking the first disturbed notes of the contrary and contradictory theme the occasion is provided by his visit to charleston and his witnessing of the facts of negro slavery okay charleston the occasion is provided by his visit to charleston and his witnessing of the facts of negro slavery as it is practiced in the south the question that he now ask is not what then is the american this new man but what then is man this being who boast so much of the excellence and dignity of his nature among that variety of unscrutable mysteries of unsolvable problems with which he surrounded the line of inquiry leads him on to other trajectories of investigation and observation what is the history of the earth so us but crimes of most heinous nature committed from one end of the world to the other we observe avarice rapine and murder equally prevailing in all parts the evil in human nature rivals the perversity of physical nature which manifests itself arbitrarily in famine diseases elementary convulsions and dissensions to such an extent that one would almost believe the principles of action in man considered as the first agent of this planet to be poisoned in their most essential parts okay so we observe avarice serpent murder equally prevailing in all parts the evil in human nature rivals rivals the perversity of physical nature 
which manifest itself arbitrarily in feminine disease elementary convulsion and dissensions to such an extent that one would almost believe the principles of action in man considered as the first agent of this planet to be present in their most essential parts Krefeker's admission of the insufficiency of reason as a guide in human affairs represents another strain of enlightenment thought obverse of that articulated by Franklin in Europe as well as in America many people especially clergymen reacted aggressively to the ideologies of rationality and materialism and sought to reestablish the idea of a religion based on spirituality and emotionalism natural religion gave people the sign of pride they exalted their worldly powers and forgot their human weaknesses okay full devotion to christ must be expressed every hour of day christ must feel the permit uh, the the permit once being okay then preaching these ideas john wesley john wesley and preaching these ideas john wesley and george whitefly to anglican priest priest leader later religious rival revival which swept england in the late 1730s enormous crowds in the fields listened enraptured enraptured storms of released feelings struck multitudes as whitefield and especially dynamic preacher warned of terrible sufferings that lay ahead for the unbelieving and held out salvation to all who truly believed in christ okay then preaching these ideas john wesley and george whitefield to anglican priest okay george wesley and john wesley and george whitefield whitefield to anglican priest led a religious revival which swept england in 17 late 1730s enormous crowds in the fields listened enraptured enraptured storms of religious feelings struck struck multitudes as whitefield and especially dynamic preacher warned of terrible sufferings that lay ahead for the unbelieving and held out salvation to all who truly believe in christ There was great excitement when the famous Whitefield arrived in America in 1739. There was great excitement when the famous Whitefield arrived in America in 1739. He was greeted by enormous crowds from one end of the colonies to the other. There was great excitement when the famous Whitefield arrived in America in 1739. He was greeted by enormous crowds from one end of the colonies to the other. Everywhere he preached vital religion against natural religion. so fantastic was the response to the, that he was called the wonder of the age okay emulated by many american preachers he thus helped to launch the revival frenzy that swept the colonial world in the year 1739 to 1744 the great awakening as the revival progressed all colonials awaited new england's reaction for that region had long been recognized as america's foremost plantation of religion it was the emergence of jonathan edwards 1703 to 1748 at northampton massachusetts in 1734 1735 that seemed to many to be the real beginning of the american revival okay so jonathan edwards 1703 to 1748 at northampton massachusetts in new england where there was much anxiety between about rising affluence individualism and break up of old days Uh, the underlying tension exploded with especial violence enthusiasm achieved unmatched heights reaching near delirium in its early stages edwards utilized this enthusiasm and recast calvinism to align with revivalism thus becoming the most important puritan theologian since john calvin himself the joy of the great awakening he said uh was good and proper okay john kelvin him john kelvin himself the joy of the great uh, the joy of the great awakening uh, great awakening he said was good and proper it was a delight that rushed in on people and their entire wings reacted to the love of god to the beauties he had created in this world but edwards was a true calvinist god in his mind ha- was still the blazing essence awesome 
all powerful and holy majesty being who willed all things and was the center of faith considering the perfection of god edward said people could see in contrast how prideful lustful and selfish they were in their self centered petty lives consider the universe that god had made how harmonious and perfect it was consider the beauties of the natural creation of all that was of god astonished and overwhelmed by all these people would be drawn to god as in nature all things were drawn by gravitation to a common center okay all things consider the universe god had made how harmonious and perfect it was consider the beauties of the natural creation of all that was of god astonished and overwhelmed overwhelmed by all these people would be drawn to god as in nature all things were drawn by gravitation to common center left to ourselves he said we are bound for hell such a fate was appropriate for creatures so corrupted and tarnished this made god salvation all the more revishing to consider salvation for edwards meant living not only a moral life but also life in which people worked for the regeneration of all society in its institution and arrangements as well as in its religion working across the boundaries of religious sects with other similarly regenerated in other church the new elect to transform the world there had thus appeared once more in the great awakening the powerful motivations that had impelled the 17th century puritans the first radicals okay the first radicals then then we go to the slavery and the enlightenment okay then we will go slavery and the enlightenment for all its celebration of reason the american enlightenment witnessed the last scale expansion of the irrational institution of slavery as the economy enlarged southern pat- southern planters joined whites in the caribbean islands and latin america in calling for more slaves from africa okay as the economy enlarged southern planters joined whites in the caribbean islands here it is the main key point you can note down as the economy enlarged southern planters joined whites okay southern planters joined whites in the caribbean islands and latin america in calling for more slaves from africa and by 1700 a new crop was making its appearance about 7, 1685 it had been discovered that the flat coastal lowlands of south carolina were ideal for raising the ancient grain brought from the orient to the occident in the middle ages okay so a new crop was found at that time in south carolina where idol for raising the ancient grain brought from the orient to occident in the middle ages rice slaves taken to the region around charleston were put to work in large gangs on extensive rice plantations then slaves taken to region around charleston were put to work in large gangs on extensive rice plantation the harsh climate in the swamps and wetlands and the regions endemic tropical diseases brought horrifying death rates to the slave populations okay the so harsh climate in the swamps and wetlands and the regions endemic tropical diseases brought horrifying deaths rates to slave population however high profits allowed the small white population to live in safety and luxury in charleston and when the colony of georgia was found in 1732 in savannah directing their plantation from a distance they did not live in the presence of their slaves and come to know them as individual persons they regarded the cost of replacing those who had died as simply an unavoidable cost of operation the rice plantation sent 18 million pounds of their crop to europe in 1730 by 1770 exports had reached the huge total of 76 million pounds and the price had even risen 10% the black slaves despite their high death rate continue to be 
continue to be highly profitable okay so in uh, the rice plantation sent 18 million pounds of their crop to europe in 1730 by 1770 exports had reached the huge total of 76 million pounds and the price had even risen 10 percent the black slaves despite their high death rate continued to be highly profitable by 1750 they constituted 60 percent of carolina population in 1775 south carolina alone held 1 lakh slaves the other great region in the south lay around the chesapeake bay okay the chesapeake uh, bay the other great region uh, region in the south lay around the chesapeake bay here the economy was built around the tobacco plant which was raised most efficiently on small farms due to over production tobacco prices remained fairly low keeping profits down thus virginia planters could not generally afford slave gangs thus virginia planters could not generally afford slave gangs they tended in fact to buy more black women from africa than diet okay the chesapeake bay here the economy was built around the tobacco plant which was raised most efficiently on small farms due to overproduction tobacco prices remained fairly low keeping profits down thus virginia planters could not generally afford slave gangs they tended in fact to buy more black women from africa than did rice planters in order to acquire cheaply through later child bearing the slaves it was hard for them to acquire directly thus in turn allowed for a healthier and more vigorous family life among chesapeake bay slaves bay slaves who in any event were freer of sickness because they did not work in disease ridden swamps and in large gangs were contagious diseases spread rapidly the virginia slaves therefore flourished through natural increase in a fashion strikingly different from the situation further south and especially from that in the cruel caribbean island sugar plantations there were over 170000 slaves in virginia in 1775 who amounted to almost half of the colony's population desperate to increase their profits slave owners extracted work from their slaves with utter ruthlessness okay desperate to increase their profits slave owners extracted work from their slaves with utter ruthlessness idleness was not tolerated indeed, indeed severely punished idleness was not tolerated indeed severely punished beatings became harsh and savage fugitive slaves could even be freely legally killed for their crime also slave owners solved an elaborate code of laws practices and attitudes to rationalize their brutal treatment of the slaves and make slavery appear right and proper and indeed a duty in the 18th century of course this was a situation not limited to south from pennsylvania northward Uh, there were scattered concentration of black slave population particularly in towns and cities new york had the highest proportion with perhaps 15% of its population black new jersey and pennsylvania contained 8% and in new england as a whole the figure was 3% in general by the 1790s a higher proportion for the whole population was black than at any point ever again in american history some 20% with black people growing in numbers for more far more rapidly than whites there was great fear of slave rebellions which in fact began taking place on a small scale as early as 1663 in virginia this led to the creation of stringent often savage slave courts in all the colonies these courts were built on two concepts absolute authority of slave owners over slaves and the belief that blacks were of barbarous wild savage natures wholly unqualified to be governed by the laws customs and practices okay the slaves courts are there and the blacks are uh, treated as the barbarous wild savage natures and unqualified to be government to be governed by the laws customs and practices okay so absolute authority of slave owners over slaves was there then new york with its many slaves had a of resume of slave courts in south carolina where by 1765 where there are two blacks to every white person 
Regular slave patrols gave the countryside a military character. Rivaling the Rivaling the specter of slave revolt as a source of tension in the south was the obvious and widespread mingling of the races particularly where blacks were most numerous and under the strictest most dehumanizing controls one of the great paradoxes in race relations is that the heaviest intermingling occurred precisely when black americans were the least free not after the ending of slavery Nothing aroused such powerful anger in white men as the thought of black slaves forcing themselves on white women a common and obsessive fear okay nothing aroused such powerful anger in white men as the thought of black slaves facing forcing themselves on white women a common and obsessive fear despite dis- disapprovals uh, disapprovals and disallowances from london southern states often used Castration sometimes in an astonishingly routine way as a punishment or a stemming tactic for black men. Okay, despite disapprovals and disallowances from London, southern states often used castration sometimes in an astonishingly routine way as a punishment or a stemming tactic for black men. Few things so aided the rise of English contempt for Americans, indeed northern contempt for southerners. Southerners, as the manner in which slaves were treated from Chesapeake southward, the American women of the 18th century, the irrationality of blatant race oppression was masked by the irrationality of subtle gender discrimination in 18th century America. The codes of gender discrimination, in fact, were were inbuilt into the structure of the colonial American family. Okay. so at that time the codes of gender discrimination was there in prevailing in, inside the society the form of family which the colonizers uh, colonials brought with them from britain was much like that familiar to modern americans nuclear family in which husband and wife and their children formed a household land was generally granted to the head of the household the father as the generation passed the original tied village communities of the early colonial phase broke apart families tended to live in separate isolated homesteads by the 1750s intermarriage between households in thousands of small towns and villages in the northern colonies had built a strong network of relationships which helped to make community life stronger than it had been nonetheless nuclear families remained the basic social units in colonial life within the family the need to be almost entirely self sufficient made for a close interdependence between husband and wives there was no question which of the two was legally and morally superior male supremacy was the rule which is not the same as saying it was a law of nature this was expressed most dramatically in the possession of land by men not by women since land was economic basis of almost all life Women and men usually worked separately the one in the house and the kitchen garden the other in the fields and with the livestock but but the two activities flowed into a single economic unit okay women and men usually worked separately the one in house and the kitchen garden the other in the fields broadly men's work centered around farming while women's work centered around manufacturing women preserved the vegetables and salted the meats brewed the beer, beer and pressed the cider in addition they wove cloth made wool and sewed dresses they also dipped candles and cared for family health by preparing home remedies and soap preparing meals was but the last stage in the manufacturing process and this was done in addition to the routine tasks of bearing and rearing children Nonetheless wives were considered inferior to their husbands whom they were obey reverently colonials thought of the home as a little commonwealth in which man's authority provided government and administration even if he were himself untruly okay so here it is the main key point nonetheless wives are considered inferior to their husbands whom they were obey reverently colonials thought of home as a little commonwealth in which man society provided government and administration even if he were himself unruly everyone in fact was thought to occupy a certain position on the social hierarchy 
all of life was thought to be arranged with, within the great chain of being and subjection to men was women's role. On the other hand, Puritans and Quakers seem determined to treat women as persons of substance and significance. Men were lectured endlessly not to be dictated uh, not to be dictatorial and women were instigated not to be dictated to colonial courts often moved into perfect women and children from brutal met, brutal maltreatment of men marriage was made a contract that could be broken not a permanent divine state as under catholicism and of course the woman's crucial role in the household which had to be self sufficient in a world where 90% of the people lived on the farm gave adam sreve a strong position okay gave adam sreve a strong position here it is the main key point gave adam sreve a strong position in 90% self sufficient woman uh, who who was taken the crucial role of the household okay so gave adam sreve a strong position in addition both quaker and puritan teachings made conjugal love love between married couple a tender and lofty part of life couples were endlessly entreated to express their affection to regard each other as one flesh and spirit and thus to avoid the civil war that might tragically mar such little commonwealths in short there was a distinctly modern quality in colonial american marriage then let us sum up in this unit i have tried to describe the evolution of colonial america into a federal structure in the process of engaging the modern economic and cultural influences the period during which the transition tra during, uh, during which this transition occurred anticipating america's emergence as a nascent state in its own right is popularly referred to as the period of the american enlightenment this unit focuses on some major enlightenment personages personages as well as on their points of view simultaneously an attempt is made to explore the other side of enlightenment euphoria exploitation on the basis of race and gender in particular which made the progress of enlightenment period possible then here it is the questions describe and discuss the material circumstances which made the american enlightenment possible some of the major ten major tenets of the american enlightenment critically comment on the respective position of benjamin franklin saint jean de crovecker and jonathan edwards vis a vis these tenets far from witnessing the withering away of racism and sexism the american enlightenment provided a relief to these exploitative practices do you agree give reasons for your answer okay then here it is the block conclusion the multiple inter intersecting context of american literature now that you have read the five units that make up this block on context of american literature i hope you agree with me that an appreciation of the taste of american literature including those of european american and puritan literature alone necessitates an awareness of more context than merely the puritan or the european american context even the earliest white immigrants to america established themselves as american not in absolute terms but in relation initially to the Europe europeans from whom they had separated and then to the other ostensibly not so american inhabitants of the continent for example the indians who came before them and the blacks who were brought in after them thus the trope of the americanness became immediately intricately interlinked with the politics of cultural exclusion and inclusion okay then inevitably the uh, the canonization of text of american literature took place on the premise of the politics so that the narratives oral or written or the of the slave population or of the indigenous tribes of america remained Uh, bracketed our t uh, bracketed out till recently from the category of american literature although they had much to express about the making of america talented authors from this minority cultural groups such as the indian chief stitel and the black housemaid phyllis wetley both producing their works in 19th century became victims of this cultural erasure chief settle and black housemaid housemaid phillips okay chief settle and black housemaid phillips sweetly these are the two writers both producing their works in the 19th century okay the works of white writers 
from cotton mather to crocker which could which would never have been authored had there been no others from them to reckon with in american society received canonical acknowledgement all this suggests the existence not only of multiple but of multiple intersecting contexts which contributed to the production of the taste of american literature it is of course one of the greatest ironies of american cultural history that a monocultural construction was imposed upon it at that very con- very junction of the intersection between the 18th and 19th centuries when the american society and the culture has becoming more than ever earlier irreversibly pluralized here it is a glossary blacks the descendants of african slaves in america hispanics spanish speaking americans or latin american descent new jerusalem a title used by the earliest puritan immigrants for the terrorists in north america freshly settled by them as an index of their aspiration to found a utopian society Jerusalem was the holy city in Israel associated with the birth of Jesus Christ. The New England, a name given by the early English immigrants to the religions, regions on the east coast in North America where they established their first settlements. These regions comprise the territories of modern day New Hampshire, Maine, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut and parts of New York state. then red indian a term used to designate the aboriginal inhabitants of the american continent prior to and through the period of the european conquest of the americans okay uh, they were called because their european conquerors initially mistook them to be indians of asia because they habitually painted their faces and skins with the most flamboyant colors anglican an adjective used to denote the church of england and its concern subsequent to the break with the roman catholic church in the early part of the 16th century ecclesiastical pertaining to the church and to church officers episcopal pertaining to bishops and their authority in the church hegemonic ideologically dominant quit rent rent paid towards occupation of land till actual price of the land is neutralized and the land may be claimed as a freehold Bible Commonwealth a community established around the religious principle laid down in the bible secular heterodoxy okay secular heterodoxy expression of dissent on the uh, dissent on other than religious matters then incarceration imprisonment if induced original sin the traditional christian notion of the fall of man as originating from temptation offered to adam by eve okay eve centered original sin that is the traditional christian notion fall of man as originating from temptation offered to adam by eve adam's rib a metaphorical representation of woman deriving from the biblical account of her origin from a rib of man okay here it is a metaphorical representation of woman patron a land owner okay here it is a patron patron a land owner with manorial privileges under the colonial governments in new england then covenant with god the contract with god for instance in the old testament between the israelites and god then antinomianism what do you mean by antinomianism a view held for example by a sect in germany in the 16th century the christians are relieved from the obligation of observing the moral law then pelagianism a theory emanating from the monk pelagnis okay a theory emanating from the monk pelagnis denying denying the doctrine of original sin then enlightenment an intellectual cultural cultural movement in 18th century europe america emphasizing reason and secular ideals rather than religious norms and faith okay rather than religious norms and faith biblical typology schemes of types emblems and symbols used as representational aids in biblical narratives this is the biblical typology schemes of types emblems and symbols used as representational aids in biblical narratives then hermeneutic method method of deciphering or decoding used to explain scriptural text okay 
hermeneutic method method of deciphering decoding used to explain scriptural text so here is the end of this topic okay block one is block one is already completed if you like my video please put a like share and subscribe my video i will give all the key points and key notes and exam point of view i will give notes already uh, so please please like share and subscribe my videos thank you thank you viewers